lefty mouthpiece Bill Maher attacks progressive plans to make college free, refers to professors as, quote, overpaid babysitters, unquote. You know things are not well in limousine liberal town when the gobels of the left-wing fascism cult calls out the Fuhrer. I'm Dr. Nuke, she's Katie, and liberal tears make me happy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today's show is sponsored by Mike Lindell and our friends at MyPillow. For more than 15 years, MyPillow has been producing the most comfortable pillows in the world. In fact, they've sold over 40 million of them. In addition, MyPillow also makes beds, sheets, towels, bathrobes, dog beds, slippers, robes. Our audience can save up to 66% on all of these wonderful items simply by using the code Dr. Duke, D-R-D-U-K-E. That's right. Use the new code D-R-D-U-K-E. That's Dr. Duke at MyPillow.com. Support a great American company, save some money, and provide us with some much needed money to keep the show going. Again, one more time, go to the MyPillow.com site, Dr. Duke, D-R-D-U-K-E, to save up to 66% on quality merchandise. All right, today we start with liberal talking head Bill Maher, who's actually been on a bit of a jag attacking the left for its stupidity over the last couple of weeks. Just this last show, he attacked all those progressives who want to see college education free, the leftist proposal and what it's going to cost. So uh, Maher, who, it, it, well, I'll say this much about him, he's one of the honest liberals in the sense that he will go after his own kind in ways that the Samantha Bees of the world never do. And so I suppose he does a little bit of credit with that. He's not, a, he's not uh, afraid like Stephen Colbert is to, to turn on his own audience, to look out at the audience of sycophants who are watching his show and then tell him illiberal things from time to time. It's kind of neat to see. In fact, what he says here about the, the consequences of free college for everyone makes a lot of sense, whether you're liberal or conservative. Let's let uh, Bill have his say here. Biden's plan is an endorsement of a particular idea, that the more time humans spend in classrooms staring at blackboards, the better. Liberals see more school the way Republicans see tax cuts, as the answer to everything. We imagine going to college is the way to fight income inequality, but actually it does the reverse. If you have a bachelor's degree, you make about 65% more than someone who doesn't. And with a master's degree, it's more like 100% more. And the unemployment rate of college grads is about half what it is for high school grads. I know free college is a left-wing thing, but is it really liberal for someone who doesn't go to college and makes less money to pay for people who do go and make more? So sometimes when Bill Maher speaks, he makes a lot of sense. And Blind he- Blind squirrel <laughs> can sometimes locate a nut. This, the clock is correct. A broken clock is That's correct right. twice a day. So Bill Maher is what you would, I guess, put more as a actual liberal versus a leftist who doesn't want to hear about anything logical. And Bill Maher, I mean, he's always spoken out on, you know, free speech issues. Ten, he actually, ten, years, ten years ago, Bill Maher was a, a leftist. When, well, Fifteen years ago when George Bush was president, he was a leftist. I, I'd like to think that age, time, and reason, reason have maybe. caught up with him. Uh, and I hope he's seen enough stupidity out of the Democrats to realize that by no means do they hold all the answers. This is true. But what's interesting is when I originally had seen this piece, um, I was scrolling through Facebook and Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs, Mike Rowe, he, someone had tagged him in the video, the Bill Maher clip saying, hey, you've been saying this all along. Bill Maher basically took your answers, took your script. And Mike Rowe being classic Mike Rowe wrote back saying, you know what? That's the biggest compliment I've ever seen. If, if he stole uh, Mike's stuff, that means that Bill Maher was watching Mike Rowe, and he says, hey, thank you. Bill Maher Take really is, in every sense of the word, the bizarro Mike Rowe, isn't he? he maybe. I mean, when you have to think about it, mm, and they could be very, I mean, they really could be farther apart. But uh, there are, and that shows you, there is grounds, c common grounds, really, even between the extreme right and the left, extreme left when it comes to certain issues. And the 
the failures of university education, I, I, I think the most important thing Bill Maher said is the problem with liber liberals is they think that kids sitting there staring at blackboards actually matters. I've said this many times in the Dr. Duke show, 40% of my own kids, 40% of the kids I teach at my university shouldn't be here. It's been true, it's been true at all seven universities I've taught at. Le about 40, 45% of the kids don't wanna be there. Either they don't, they're not interested, they're there for vacation, they're there to party, they're for, there for social reasons, or they're inequipped. They're, they've been socially pro passed from grade to grade to grade. They don't know anything and they're not capable of doing the work. Four out of 10 of my students don't belong in college. The idea, it's a liberal idea to think that sitting more and more kids in front of classrooms, watch staring at black, uh, blackboards and not having them have any skin in the game. Don't even charge them for it. Give, give, give them the college experience free. They really think that that's going to make it better. It's going to make it a lot worse. All I heard you say was blackboard and skin. And I'm like, wait, now it's whiteboards that they use. They don't uh, even use blackboards. Racist. And then I just, I couldn't focus anymore. But anywho. But there's proof, Katie. There's proof that Bill Maher is right, because we have a second story here. Is there? Yes, we there do. is. So we have a story um, that was actually put into the Wall Street Journal. R.R. Uh, Reno, who's the editor of First Things, explained why he has decided to basically not hire any Ivy League graduates. So if you went to Harvard or Yale, don't try going to be a writer for him, because nope. And it's because they're either too woke or too self-important <laughs> or Which, for both. both or both um and so they don't know when it actually matters when it comes down to it what he says is they won't speak up when it does matter but they're so woke that they'll speak out on anything that really they speak doesn't matter with confidence about things they, they could not possibly not know understand. at one point uh he writes student activists don't represent the majority of students but i find myself wondering about the silent acquiescence of most students they allow themselves to be cowed by charges of racism and other sins i mean i sympathize the atmosphere atmosphere of intimidation in elite higher education is intense but i don't want to hire a person well practiced in remaining silent when it costs something to something to speak that's right our university is forcing conservative kids not forcing it, it's it's blackmailing conservative and christian kids to shut up and to play the game and to turn in fake papers and to go along to get along and if you're that kind of kid you may not be an ivy league kid even at all but you're that kind of kid who's willing to keep his own world his own philosophical views political views hidden if he thinks it's going to upset the the elite no, well, then you're the last person we need working for us, says Mr. Reno. You know, if we're going to talk about these Ivy League universities, um, let's talk about the silly Brits and how they have Oxford and how now at Oxford Uni they want to cancel Queen Mum. How dare they? The uh, wokers at Oxford want a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II removed because it represent the, represents the UK's colonial history. Mm, of course they are master's degree or graduate students because the graduate students are the most woke of the woke. They are wokest. And I guess it was uh, a group of graduate members of the Middle Common Room. <laughs> it sounds like Harry Potter. At the Middle Common Room MCR at the Magdalen College, Oxford, and they voted to take down the 1952 print of the monarch, arguing that it should be replaced with, quote, art by or of other influential and inspirational people, unquote. And uh, they agreed to any subject, any other depictions of the British royal family to a vote. So they want to take the queen mom down. And if you have any other member of that royal family, well, you better get voted on first. Now, my question is, are they going to, as they say, put uh, art by or of other influential and whatever people, that uh, immaterial statue that just got purchased for $18,000? And by immaterial statue, I mean an imaginary statue that literally was just purchased for $18,000. Look it up. Yeah, I, this whole thing is bizarre. They, these woke tards, is the, is the phrase you used, uh, they think Wokers. they're going to cancel a sitting queen. And, and the queen because, mom. because it's unwelcoming. 
she is a mom. It's unwelcoming to other students. That's the same same arguments you get rid of the flag, same argument you cancel the Constitution, mm-hmm. right? Something's not welcoming. I guarantee you more jihadis, more ISIS would come to America if we made it more welcoming. If we started cutting the heads off journalists we didn't like, if we basically mm-hmm. started burning Christian churches and Jewish uh, synagogues, I guarantee you that would be more welcoming for ISIS. <laughs> but is that what we really want here? And yes. Well, according to the MCR group, they claim that the portrait of the queen could make some students feel unwelcome mm. because they pronounce that she represents recent colonial history. And uh, they argued that the vote was not a statement on the queen herself. No, no, of course not. This is just about that portrait of the queen who's the portrait of the queen so how is it not about the queen because it's not because a piece of film is not threatening to anybody it's about what's on that film you know it's it was it was rather intended to foster quote a welcoming neutral place for all members regardless of background demographic or views you just unwelcomed all the people who like the queen (laughs) didn't you Yes, but <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, responses via the Twitter when this was announced by, by various people. Uh, Reclaim party leader Lawrence Fox said, these little twerps will be running the country soon. Enjoy. Enjoy. That's right. Stop. That's if you have future. to pause this video right now, think on that because these little twerps will be running the country and, and soon. Even a guy like Bill Maher sees it. Yeah, that's that, true. That the people that are being molded in the image of the left aren't fit to govern the to, to govern a henhouse. We're creating spoiled, spoiled yet incredibly needy, self uh, egotistical and narcissistic yet incredibly fragile, um, whiny and unable to argue. Groups of young people supporting the left. You look at what the modern leftist kid is, even smart leftist intellectuals know they don't want these kids anywhere near the seats of power in the end of of things. They they don't want these kids looking after you in nursing homes when it gets that far along. It's not going to be pretty. And then we had political commentator Calvin Robinson, who basically said that in a nutshell. Um, He believed that if this would actually go out of just those graduate, that group of graduate students, that this would be completely overblown. It would fail because they would keep Queen Mom, where she belongs, mm. in her rightful place, as he says, because Her Majesty the Queen is our sovereign. She is more than a person. She represents the crown, but she is also a British institution representing all that unites us and that is something to celebrate. Especially in this divis- uh, divisive age we live in, what this is is a load of students being woke, being social justice warriors, wanting to prove that they are good people. All Accurate. by censoring a picture 1952 portrait a portrait well of course we are going to end on a bit of drama by a professor who has claimed that evangelical christians are racist and they may end up killing everyone that is university of pennsylvania professor anthea butler ivy league Mm. who's the chair of religious studies and associate professor of religious studies and Africana studies. Oh, there you go. Yep. Well, she decided to be on a... Wakanda? Wakanda forever. Uh, She was on a panel that was hosted by the University of Virginia. Was it patronized by Swiffer? It might have been. Did they fund it? Swiffer wet jet or Swiffer That's a dry jet. It's got to be for the dry. That's got to be the dry look, doesn't it? This is true, but... Maybe she had some bleach in her pocket. Anyway, she uh, was on a panel. It was hosted by the University of Virginia. And she said, if evangelicals don't change, they pose an existential crisis to us all. They are part and parcel of the reason why we cannot move forward because they say they have religious beliefs. So now it's evangelicals right. who so not because, only are holding us back, but they're going to kill us. And, well, no, and, and an evangelical now is any... Christian mm. who actually believes in, you know, free speech. Yes, this or is true. Or the right to bear arms or the idea that sec- j- a marriage is between a man and a woman. Notice what she's done here, right? The problem with evangelicals is they have beliefs. Yes. Their be- that's the problem. They either change their beliefs to believe what we believe, the cult of yes. the Swiffer, or they are the biggest existential threat that we face. Kill us all. This, this is like the Biden White House, right? It's not 
global terrorism. It's not the Russians or the Chinese. It's not ISIS. It's the white male, the disaffected white male, who is the biggest threat to American security. When you have one supposedly leading the White House. But mm -hmm. um, this panel, I mean, she had to make this kind of a comment because the panel was titled White Evangelical Racism, The Politics of Morality in America. Now, she also happens to have a book by that name, of so that makes does. sense. Um, so Butler also decided to claim that evangelicals are willing to die for whiteness. So they're ISIS. They're, they're kamikazes, yeah. right? And it's not just about health care or guns or anything else. They're willing to die to be white. When people say to you, I don't see color, I see what Jesus sees in, sees in you. Season, like season, you, but she wrote season Jesus you. loves the little the children, children, all, all the little the children, children of the world. world. I just played Red that. And wet. Oh, sorry. I but, just played that book last night. Did for you? My I, I, for the baby? Yes, for the baby. That's I mean, her book. But no, notice the point, right? Red and yellow, black mm -hmm. and white, they're all precious. Mm -hmm. Now that is murdering is ide ideology, ideology now, right? It's Ray Steve, we didn't know Ray Stevens was a closet ISIS. We didn't, didn't know it. We. Yes. Um, so when people say to you, I don't see color, I see what Jesus, <laughs> Jesus sees in you, uh, that really actually means that they just see white. Oh, thank you. Thank you for explaining that to me. Says the woman with a white Swiffer on her. Exactly. Head. Now, also on this panel was the University of Virginia professor, Larcia Hawkins. I think that's how you say her name. She is a poli-sci professor, and she chimed in saying, saying that uh, the lost cause of the Confederacy is alive and well among white evangelical Christians today. Excuse me. If it was a lost cause and it's alive and well? Yes. Maybe it's not lost. Now, no, I'm not supporting the Confederates. No, no, no. Don't take me without my Swiffer on my head. Don't, don't take me. I'm not arguing for defending the Confederacy. I'm simply saying, look at the logic of these people. Yes. The long lost cause of the, of the Confederacy is alive and well with evangelicals. And she doesn't even see the problem in her statement. Well, here's her full, here's her actual, like, her thesis. quote, her quoted statement. That was a summation. She says, I think that a strong and compelling argument can be made that it's not just a lost cause, a narrative that still animates white evangelical Christianity wherever it exists, whether it's on the West Coast, in the South, I lived in Chicago for 10 years, and I came away telling my friends upon reflection, the Midwest is Confederate. In fact, mm -hmm. America is Confederate. There you go. Yeah. So it, not just evangelical Christianity, it's Christianity, right? It's all of it. It's, this is what we call Christian nationalism. That's the word they've come up with. Christian nationalism is to be a Christian and to take any aspect of your religion seriously. Mm -hmm. That makes you a nationalist. Any aspect of Christianity that doesn't conform to woke liberal progressivism is ideology of nationalism and fascism. Yes. And it's just so predictable. Now, before we go, uh, Ms. Swiffer, I mean Butler, uh, we have to remember her history a little bit. Oh, yes. In 2013, she had called God a white racist. Yep. And a couple of years later, she's like, you know what? Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, mm -hmm. you deserve to be titled coon of the year mm -hmm. and you know in 2020 whenever when we were all you know surviving the pandemic she was saying that the vatican is trying to tell catholics to pay attention to the racism that is happening and the racism that is in your own church in america ooh. wait she supports the vatican yeah it's, it's, now that you've got uh, it's, ooh. <laughs> fellow red traveler francie little frankie frankie the communist frankie the communist now it's okay with, but it's the, but that's the same Roman Catholic Church that doesn't want to let black people abort black bubbas abort their babies, in very much uh, uh, Planned Parenthood style. It's time now for some real education. One of the great humanists of all times, maybe one of the greatest, was a fellow by the name of Desiderius Erasmus Rotterdamus, or better known as Erasmus. This guy was remarkable, a Dutch philosopher and a Christian scholar, and he opposed the, he opposed the, uh, the 
Protestant Reformation. He's considered to have been one of the greatest scholars of the actual Northern Renaissance. As a Catholic priest, he was an important figure in classical scholarship, one of the first to teach Latin, excuse me, to teach Greek and to argue for the teaching of Greek in the West after so many years. He wrote a beautiful Latin style, remarkable guy, probably one of the greatest humanist uh, scholars you'll, you may may not ever heard of you if you haven't studied the period, but you'll get a sense from his comments, some of his quotes, just how wise a thinker he was. So let's take a look at some of the commentary of Erasmus of Rotterdam. Quote, when I have a little money, I buy books. And if I have any money left, I buy food and clothes. And that's not extremism. I mean, the quest for knowledge, right? That's, if, if we're not here to learn as human beings, if we're not here to absorb as much as we can in the little time we're here, then why are we here? When I have a little money, I buy books. And if I have any money left, I buy food and clothes. How about this one? Your library is, or should be, your paradise. In a, in a, in a, in a well-stocked library, what isn't there? the highs and the lows and all the in-betweens of human experience. Your library actually is your paradise. How about this one? Quote, I consider as lovers of books, not those who keep their books hidden in their store chests and never, never handle them, but those who, by night as well as daily, use, thumb them, batter them, wear them out, who fill out all the margins with annotations of many kinds, and who prefer the marks of a fault they have erased to a neat copy full of faults. It makes me think about what I see when I walk through Hobby Lobby or places like that. They've actually created these fake plastic books that look like the real leather, and they're empty. They're just plastic books. So you can have the appearance of knowledge. They're not, there aren't even actual pages, blank pages in it. It's just the appearance of knowledge. So you, why go to the trouble of collecting all those dusty old actual leather-bound books when you can have these books that from four or five feet away, maybe plastic, don't open and have nothing to tell us, actually look like books. So there, it's the world we have. How about this quote from Erasmus? Quote, the main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth, unquote. How have we dropped the ball on that one? The main hope of a nation lies in how we educate our kids, and we are failing miserably. How about this quote? Quote, do not be guilty of possessing a library of learned books while lacking learned, learning yourself. If you got learned books in your shelves and you're unlearned, then the books are all for show, not for tell. Read your books. Go back to reading books. There's very little a video game can tell you uh, that you wouldn't that you need to know, and a whole lot in books that you'll probably never know because you're too busy playing video games. All right, get off your video games. Those are the stories for today. If you have a question for us, please feel free to drop it into the mailbag by emailing askduke at fpeusa.org. And if you enjoy our content, which <laughs> let's be honest. You do. Please consider joining our Patriot Club. Your one-time $99 tax-deductible donation allows us to keep bringing you all these crazy, crazy, crazy stories every single day. Now, to sign up, all you have to do is simply visit patriotclub.us. That's patriotclub.us. And as a little thank you, we will ship you our signature red tumbler. And that's going to do it for this show. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, my friends, stay educated. Stay educated.